Welcome to the HBM Test and Measurement FAQ video series. I'm Clark Anderson, an HBM Applications Engineer, and in this video I'm going to provide an overview of Quantum X wiring. This video will cover common questions and mistakes when wiring sensors to a Quantum X module. It will cover where to find the wiring diagrams, the purpose of jumpered connections shown in the wiring diagrams, sensor supply wiring and its limits, look at frequency signal wiring options, and finally CAN bus signal wiring. All wiring schematics are located in the Quantum X operating manual. This manual comes on the Quantum X system CD that you received with your module. Uh, you can also download the DVD from the HBM website. It's at www.hbm.com and then you would go to the download section and for Quantum X Somat XR system DVD. Chapter 9 in the Quantum X operating manual has all the wiring schematics organized by sensor type. You can see here on the left side Chapter 9 that each sensor type has its own section and it includes the wiring for any Quantum X module that supports that sensor type. Here is an example of a quarter bridge wiring for the MX1615B module. It shows the wiring connection for both a 3 and 4 wire quarter bridge connection. Here is a close up of the MX1615B connector with a 3 wire strain gauge connection. In the previous slide, it showed that pin 8 was for cable shield, but since this cable is unshielded, there is no connection. There is also no TEDS connection. The TEDS and shield are optional connections. Here is the half bridge wiring schematic for the MX1615B. Take note of the sense lead connections. If your half bridge wiring cable only has three wires, you must jumper the sense leads at the connector. Here is the full bridge wiring connection for an MX1615B. Note that the MX1615B supports six wire bridge connection. So therefore if you have a full bridge with only four wires in the cable, you must jumper the sense leads to the excitation leads at the connection to the amplifier. Here is a close-up of a full bridge sensor connected to a MX1615B connector. The sensor being used is only a four wire bridge. Thus you will notice that the sense leads are jumpered to the excitation leads. Sense plus goes to excitation plus and sense minus goes to excitation minus. If you do not jumper these connections when using your four wire full bridge sensor, the amplifier will give an overflow condition. This is the wiring diagram for a 10 volt output sensor. Typically sensors that have a 0 to 10 volt output require sensor supply. Some Quantum X modules can provide 5 to 24 volt sensor supply. Be careful to check your current requirement for your sensor as the Quantum X modules can only provide 0.7 watts per channel and for a total of 2 watts module. Some Quantum X modules do not activate a connector until two pins are jumpered. Here is the full bridge wiring diagram for an MX840B. Notice that pins 4 and 9 are jumpered. This jumper activates the connector. If the connection is not made, the connector will not be activated. It is not optional. Depending on the type of frequency output your sensor has, there are three different wiring configurations. The first one shown here is for a differential frequency signal without a direction signal. This is typical for the frequency torque signal from many HBM torque sensors. The second wiring configuration is for a differential frequency signal with a directional signal. This is the speed signal output for many HBM torque sensors. The third wiring configuration 
is for a single pole frequency signal with directional signal. This is a common output for industrial pulse encoders. There are two quantum X modules that support CAN signals. The MX840B and the MX471B. The MX840B supports CAN signals only on channel 1 and can provide sensor supply. The MX471B does not provide sensor supply. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions please feel free to call, email, or visit our website for the latest product solutions and downloads at www.hbm.com.